I wonder for a minute if you can imagine that I was a coach of a rugby or a hockey team and I came to you after Sports Plus and I said, you know, I've been watching you for a while, you've got some good skills, I'd love you to come and sign for my team, to come and play for me this season. I wonder what I could offer to you to try and get you to sign up, something that would be appealing, maybe lots of incentives. What would do it for you? Maybe it might be some money, an appearance fee for every time that you come to play for this team, or every time you score a goal, you get a bonus. Maybe that would do it for you. Or maybe it's the offer of some nice new kit. None of that rubbish Diadora or Macron stuff that you've been wearing. Anybody wearing that in the front row? I don't think so. Uh, Nike, that's what I'm going to offer. Under Armour gear, only the best for you. Would that get you to sign? Or maybe it might be that, do you know whenever you're not feeling like it, on days when it's wet and it's cold outside, do you know what you can do? Just send me a wee text, let me know that you're not going to make training. Still fine, that's okay, we'll still have you on the team. You don't need to train all the times. Only when you feel like it. Do you know, there's loads of incentives that I could offer for you to sign up to my team, to make that offer as appealing as possible, to butter you up, sweeten the deal. And would you believe that in Luke chapter 9 that we just read, that Jen just read for us, this is Jesus' offer to anyone who's going to sign up to his team and be his disciple and follow him. It might not have seemed like it, because as we read it, it's not really what you would ex expect. There's no offer of nice new kit. There's no guarantee of money to buy all the luxuries that you want in life. In fact, there's no guarantee at all that this is going to be an easy, comfortable life if you're on Jesus' team. Because this is what he says to anyone who wants to follow me. Anyone who's come to me, who's put their trust in me, who's claiming to follow me, this is what he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Maybe this week you've made a commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Maybe as the week has gone on, you've realized your need of rescue. You've realized that it was always in God's plan to send a rescuer in Jesus Christ. Because that's the only way that any one of us can be saved. Any one of us in this room can be rescued from the dire situation that we find ourselves in. Only through Jesus Christ. But maybe you're wondering what's next. Because last night even, think about it, it was incredible in this room. The buzz, the energy. Sports Plus just in itself, it's an incredible week, isn't it? Surrounded by Christian sports people. People who are encouraging you to look to Jesus Christ as you play your sport this season. Encouraging you to keep going even when it's tough. But what's it going to be like in a couple of weeks' time when you're back out there, and you're back in school, and you're the only Christian in your sports team? Or when you go back home, and you're the only Christian in your family? Or what's it going to look like in a couple of weeks' time when temptation comes and you're really struggling to fight that sin? How are you going to keep going? Well, Jesus wants to be honest with you this morning. He wants to be real with you because he wants you to know that the way of rescue, for those who have been rescued by Jesus Christ, is a life that requires commitment, and one that requires sacrifice. And do you know why? Well, he reminds his disciples at the start of these verses that we read why it's going to be like that. Because he wants to remind us of the way of the rescuer. The way of the rescuer. Look what he says. For anyone who wants to follow me, remember how you were rescued by me. Look at verse 22. This is what he says. The son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. You see, we've seen this already this week, haven't we? Tuesday night, we saw the way of rescue. The way Jesus Christ came to this earth, he was mocked and beaten, scorned and despised by people. He was brutally murdered on a cross. And why? Well, it was to rescue us to rescue you and to rescue me and Jesus says if you're going to make a commitment to following me 
if you're going to be my disciple, then you need to know, you need to know that the way of the rescuer is going to be the way of the rescued. That the road that I walked is the road that you're going to walk as well. A road of suffering, a road of opposition, of even persecution at times. That road that I walked, one that ultimately led to death, that's the one that you're going to have to walk if you're going to follow me. And I wonder this week, have you fully grasped the way of the rescuer, Jesus Christ? Have you fully understood what kind of rescuer Jesus is? What the leader is if you're going to follow him? What the captain of this team is really like? How he had to live his life and suffer and die to rescue us. Because yes, he is a glorious triumphant king who came to this earth and who died on the cross to offer us hope and forgiveness. Yes, he is the glorious king who rose from death to life and promises that one day through his resurrection we will do that too yes he is that king but jesus christ also says remember i am a suffering rescuer i am a suffering savior and that's the way of rescue and the way of the rescuer is going to be the way of the rescued because look at what he goes on to in verse 23 the way of Anyone who has been rescued requires two radical things, two radical demands. The first is self-denial. Self-denial. Look what he says. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. Now, when you think of self-denial, when we talk about that, we often use it in quite trivial, superficial ways. We say, I'm going to deny myself some chocolate or deny myself some sweeties, as Phil always says. Or I'm going to deny myself some time in the Xbox tonight or on my phone. But yes, those are self-denial. But actually what Jesus is talking about is so much more than that. So much greater. Because in the New Testament, the verb to deny, it's almost always used when talking about a person. To deny or to disown knowing someone. It's like saying, I don't have any relationship with you. I don't know you. I am not part of who you are. And Jesus says to his disciples, if you're going to be my disciple then you need to deny yourself. What does he mean, deny yourself? Well, if you think about what we're like by nature, we heard about this on Monday night with Lanks. We're selfish and we're proud. We do what we want to do and not what God commands us to do. We turn away from the way that God wants us to live and we say we want to live the way we want. We take the gifts that God has given us, the good gifts, but we reject the giver. We're selfish. We want it for ourselves. And we just want to feed that sinful nature that we have. But Jesus says, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, then you need to deny yourself once and for all. You need to say to yourself, I don't know you. That person that I once was, I don't know you and I disown you completely. Nothing to do with you anymore. And that's what it means to be a Christian where we turn away from that sinful, wicked nature that we once were, and we turn to Jesus Christ, where we heard last night from from Hampo, we take off that sinful nature, we throw it away, and Jesus Christ gives us his righteousness, his purity, and he puts it on us. If you think about your sport, and I don't know if you're like me, this happened all the time with me when I was younger, but in rugby especially, there'll be some training sessions you go into and you get absolutely clarried in mud, yeah? You're just mud from head to toe. And I don't know why this is, but you don't really shower, you just get onto the bus and you head home. You've just, you're clarried in mud, but you just don't shower. And whenever you arrive in the door, my mom would always say to me, what are you doing? Look at the state of you. You're absolutely stinking. Get those dirty clothes off. Put them in the washing machine and get into the shower. And I'd just peel off the clothes. It'd be like horrible getting the socks off, sand and muck in them, getting that base layer off, just peeling it off, stinking, absolutely minging. And you get into the shower and you're washing your hair and all the muck is just going onto the shower floor. You realize how dirty you really wear. Dirt in below your fingernails, you're, you're scrubbing it out. And then you get out and how do you feel? Oh, it's incredible, isn't it? You wipe that mirror with all the steam on it. You look at yourself and you're all clean. Amazing, fresh, feels great. 
Now imagine I went back down to the washing machine and instead of putting on the nice new clothes that were sitting waiting for me to put on, I went down to the washing machine and I pulled out those dirty clothes again, that rugby kit that's absolutely stinking and minging, and I put it back on again. And then for the rest of the night, I just walked about in these dirty, stinking clothes. What was the point in me in the first place going for a shower? I've been washed. I've been made new, clean. Why would I then turn back and wear those old, dirty clothes? filthy clothes that have been taken off. That's what Jesus Christ says. When you come to me, you've taken off that old self. You've taken off those old, filthy, dirty clothes. Leave them to the side. Don't go back to them. Don't put them on again. Disown them completely. Come to me. Live wearing the clothes that I've given you. And you know, we often think of this self-denial And not just all of us, but we think about it in just a part of us. Yeah, I'll deny myself that part of me. I'll give that part of me to Jesus Christ. But actually, I want to keep this part for myself. I'm all right if I give Jesus that time in the week when I go to church. That can be his, but then the rest of the time's for me. When I'm in the changing room with the lads, that's my time. I can do what I want there. Or, do you know, whenever I go and I'm on my own and the things I'm looking at, well, I'll give Jesus certain things but I'm not going to give him that because I enjoy looking at that. I'm going to indulge in that because that's the way I want to continue to live. No, no, no. Jesus says you need to deny yourself once and for all, completely. Turn away from those things, throw them off and turn to me. That's what it means to follow Jesus Christ, to be a disciple of Jesus. Self-denial is the first thing. The second thing he says is, that you then are going to bear a cross. Bear a cross for me. The second demand, take up your cross daily and follow me. And you know, it, it maybe doesn't seem overly shocking to you and me. Because as we read this, we don't really get that picture in the way that the people back then would have got it. For them, this would have been so shocking. It's like Jesus is saying to them, take up the electric chair or take up the gas chamber. It's an instrument of torture. Take up your cross and follow me. And this was an instrument of torture that was reserved for those who were the lowest of the low, the worst criminals of society. It was a a means of complete humiliation and execution, the cruelest way of dying. And it's shocking. And Jesus says, if you're going to be my disciple, then you need to bear a cross daily for me. Pick up your cross and take it with you. And he's using this as a symbol of suffering, this image of the cross, to show us that every disciple, whoever's going to follow Jesus Christ, needs to be willing and ready to suffer for Jesus Christ. Of course the Christian life is full of joys. Of course it's a life that's full of peace and hope. But Jesus is warning his disciples that it's not always going to be like that. That if you're someone who's going to walk that road that I walked, you're going to have to expect to suffer like I did. And maybe you're experiencing that opposition right now. Maybe you're someone who knows what it feels like to have that cross on your shoulders daily at school or on your sports team, in the changing rooms, on the bus. You know what it's like to suffer and to face opposition from people for for being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Maybe you've been laughed at and mocked by people at school because of the things that you believe in. Maybe you faced ridicule or felt like you've been totally isolated from others because you've stood tall for Jesus Christ and you said, no, this is the way I'm going to live and I'm not going to do those things like you do. And you know what? The temptation is always to leave our cross at home. To go to school and just to say, you know, I'll leave the cross here and I'll pick it up again when I come back. When things will be easy again. Or whenever you leave church on a Sunday, you say, I'll leave my cross at the church door here. I'll pick it up again next Sunday when I come back. Or whenever you leave Sports Plus, as you drive out the gates tomorrow, the temptation might be to leave your cross sitting there at the gates of Campbell College. I'll pick it up again when I come back next year. No, no. Jesus Christ says, if you're going to be a follower of me, If you're going to be on my team, you need to pick up and carry your cross daily. That's the way of the rescued. And maybe you've sat and you've thought, do you know, 
I'm having second thoughts about all this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Whenever I'm out there on my own, when there's no team leaders around, when there's no one else to encourage me to keep going, how am I going to do it? Whenever I've got those temptations and the things that come back in in the next few weeks, how am I going to say no to them? Why would I choose to live a life that requires massive sacrifice, massive commitment to Jesus Christ? This life sounds tough, and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do it. Well, we're going to hear tomorrow that you're not alone when you go out to live this life for Jesus Christ. Because the way of the rescued is not a way that is lonely. We're going to find out tomorrow that the Holy Spirit lives in each one of us. That is God's Spirit living in you. The power that we've seen this week in Jesus Christ living in each, inside each one of us. Helping us to live that life. And God has given us his word so that we know how to live. So that we can read it every day. So that God can communicate with us through his word and through praying to him. You're not alone. But also, Jesus wants to remind you at the end that it is worth it living this life. Because there is a massive reward for the rescued. A massive reward if you are faithfully denying yourself, picking up your cross and following Jesus Christ every day. Because the Bible says our lives are like this. If you were to look at this piece of rope, our lives here on earth are this. You see it? You can't even see it from the back maybe. This little black bit here. That's our lives here on earth. And this is what the Bible says that our lives are in eternity. And it goes on and on and on. And it goes out that door and it goes down to the sports field and it goes round and round. It goes to the end of Northern Ireland to the ends of the earth. This bit goes on forever. This bit only lasts this amount. There are two, two types of people in this room. There are those in this room who are living as if this life is the only one that matters. And there are those in this room who are living knowing that this life is the one that truly matters. There are those in this room who are living trying to gain everything, everything that this world has to offer. They spend their days trying to inherit everything this world has. All the success, all the honor, all the glory. And there are those in this room who live knowing, absolutely guaranteed 100%, that they will inherit everything through Jesus Christ that this life has to offer. Life here on earth or life in eternity forever. And you know, as we read the end of this, this is what Jesus says. Whoever you are, Whichever those two types of people you are, living for this world or living knowing this one will come. He says, for whoever wants to save their life, this life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? See, living life pretending that this doesn't exist. Jesus says that anything that we've gained in this life will one day be gone. The reward that we have in this life will one day end. It will be nothing. But if we're living knowing that this life will come, it gives us a new perspective on the way we live now on earth. Because the things that we face as Christians, the suffering that we face, yes, it might be tough. Yes, it will be really hard in the moment to stand up for Jesus, to know, to know that whenever you go back to school or when you go back to your sports team this season, there will be suffering, there will be opposition. But look at how short this life is when you compare it to the glory that is to come. Suffering for a short time, glory unending forever. I wonder, are you living for this life today? Or are you living knowing this one will come.
Because Jesus says, if you live only for this life, then the only thing that you will get is rejection when Jesus Christ returns. Rejection when the Son of Man comes in glory. That's what he says in verse 26. But if you live for this life, then you have a reward that nothing else in this world, nothing else that you ever experience in life, even last night, the amazing picture that it was of what it will be like in heaven, that is nothing compared to the glory, the joy that you will experience when you're with your Savior in heaven. This is what I want to leave you with. As you go back into your sports club and team this season, if you're someone who's thinking, how am I going to keep going? How am I going to keep going when I face all this suffering and rejection and this opposition that's going to come my way for standing tall for Jesus Christ? This is what Jesus says to you. He says this in Luke 6, verses 22 and 23. If you're someone who's denying yourself and faithfully carrying your cross daily for me, blessed are you when people hate you. When they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man, because of Jesus Christ. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. It's not a pleasant thing to face this suffering and opposition, but Jesus Christ says it is a blessed thing. Your reward is great in heaven. Let me pray for us now. Father God, we thank you for the truth of your word. And Lord, we read passages like this and at times it can, it can be difficult reading. It can be things that we, when we read it, Lord, we start to feel that worry and that anxiety about living a life that requires self-denial, that requires picking up a cross daily, that will face opposition. Lord, it can really worry us and make, make us anxious. But Lord, thank you so much that you give us your word to instruct us, to keep us going that you allow us to pray to you every day, to communicate with you, to offer our worries and our anxieties to you. And Lord, that you promise to be with us every day. Lord, I pray for anyone here who is facing that opposition right now, even. I pray, Lord, that they will remember that this suffering, that that opposition is only momentary, that it will only last a moment, just a pinprick, when compared to the glory of heaven which awaits them. Lord, I pray that you will help them, encourage them to live a life that is for you, daily picking up their cross, denying themselves, and following you every day of their lives. Pray these things in your son's name. Amen.